Now imagine this, you're out and about shopping and running errands and everywhere you go, you just happen to bump into your ex-partner. Just a coincidence, but there they are again and again. Now imagine that person's an ex-partner for a good reason, they're controlling or maybe they could or would have been violent. And then the penny drops, they're tracking you and they know your every move. Sounds like something out of a spy movie, doesn't it? But for a lot of victims of domestic violence, technology facilitated abuse, it's actually got a name, TFA, is a harsh reality. Steve Wilson is a former detective. He's the founder of the Protective Group. And for the past 12 years, he's been working to help keep uh, women and sufferers of domestic violence physically and psychologically safe from those stalking, following and monitoring them. Steve Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on the program. And good afternoon and thanks for having me. Perth. So what does your job actually entail? I mean, this 12 years you've been doing this, so you've clearly seen it all. Yeah, we've seen it all. So it entails generally receiving a, uh, a referral from a family violence service or police or child protection, mainly in Victoria and New South, but with a national focus, receiving a referral to go and help someone. So they've identified the possibility they feel they're being tracked, they're, he's turning up the places that they uh, don't think he should be aware of, and we receive the referral and then go out and say, okay, we need to check your car for trackers, or we need to look on your phone or devices for spyware, or we need to look at your house to see if there's any hidden cameras. And um, and in a lot of circumstances, before women are taken, you know, poor, sorry, taken but are, are afforded, you know, sent on to a refuge, um, checking their phones and cars to make sure that there's nothing there that could um, make them unsafe. This, I mean, this, as I said, sounds like a spy movie. So what sorts of technologies are they using to track people? Uh, I, I suppose in um, trackers in cars, for instance, uh, hardwired trackers, they use the onboard navigation systems of you know, in your newer vehicles that, that they can see where their victims are going. They put Apple Air tags and tiles in in the rear vision mirrors, without sort of uh, going into too deep where they put them, but they put the money, the uh, finding a lot of Apple Air tags mm-hmm. in cars. And one car actually had, I, I think, I believe it was eight Air tags, all categorised and numbered. So he knew exactly where he put them on the car and then um, simply following them. And, and so if one was discovered, there were seven more still on the car? Correct. Well said. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, what you mentioned also things like um, video surveillance. Yep. Is that not something that's easily seen in your home? No, not really. A lot of those things can be disguised. We've found hidden cameras in pop plants, listening devices in pop plants. Um, hidden cameras could just be in a digital clock radio. They could be in a soft toy. I went to one not long ago where the, the little one had a uh, teddy bear and um, there was a, a hidden camera inside the teddy bear um, and filming them, you know, things like that. So, no, we often, we do find they can be very tiny little things. They can sit in PowerPoints. They can sit in, I've seen a can of baked beans where he'd gone to the trouble of putting a, a hidden camera in a can of baked beans and set it on the, the shelf, things like that. I mean, we know phones are often used to track, so there are there's um, software and apps and things like that. So if somebody's listening and they think, mm, maybe I think my phone might be tracked, what are you looking for on your phone? Okay, that, that gets down to what, what we, we call it spyware. There's a number of, uh, of different versions of spyware that actually take control of someone's phone. So they can, when, when the spyware is installed, they can see where they are, what they're doing. They can see their text. They can open the audio. They can see their emails. A lot of those things I pre are sold as predominantly as parental control software. Uh-huh. So you buy it off the internet. It's something that, that, that was maybe put on the people's phones when they were in a relationship a number of years ago using the excuse we just want to make sure that the kids are safe and then once the relationship finishes and the coercive control kicks in even more, they can use those uh, parental control software to see exactly where everyone is and what they're doing. It's, it's insidious and I mean, I mean I would imagine that there are a lot of people who, who probably feel they're actually going a bit crazy because, you know, they're being tracked and they don't know how. Yeah, and I, and I think that's one thing that we really notice because we hold a very open mind and when we go to, to visit someone, it's more around listening to the victim, empowering the victim, talking to the victim and often they'll say, look, gee, I, I went to a friend or I went to the police station, I told them that I think this was happening to me and they said, well, maybe you need to go and see a psychologist. Well, 
that's not all. That's not always the case. It's sometimes. Look, it's not coincidental. Usually, we find something. There is something there in compromised accounts or Google accounts or compromised passwords. So that's when we really try to identify, disrupt, and educate. And say, look, you've got to change your passwords. Change your passwords regularly. In just a moment, uh, you're going to hear about a new initiative that goes some way to helping people, particularly with their phones in this scenario, because, you know, buying a new phone is just not within the the budget of a lot of people. Um, But, Steve, what happens, what do you find happens when you do debug a home or you take the the, um, devices away? Do you you find that there is a response from the, uh, the, the stalker? No, what we do, Prue, is if we were to find something in a car or a home or on someone's kids' gaming consoles even or anything like that, we discuss it first with the victim and we say, look, we've found this, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to call your case manager at the your local family rights? Do you want to call the police? Do you want to call, do you want to call mum? We empower them to make the decision mm. and we say, look, it's really up to you to make your decision on what you want to do with it. We don't think maybe it should be there, but... Um, and some people say, well, will it aggravate the situation? I often say, look, he's probably already angry enough as it is. The perpetrator's angry enough as it is. So we put it back to the victim and say, look, what would you like us to do? Do you want to call the police? And then sort of balls in, in, in their court. So how often are you doing this, Steve? How widespread is this? Um, very widespread. I think we've today we've had probably 15 or 16 referrals from services to go and assist people. So... 50, 60 or 70 a week across Melbourne and 90% of what we, when we go there, we usually find something, whether it's a tracker or a, a tile or an air tag or it's something that's wrong with their phone that uh, he's still hooked into their phone. So, no, we find it regularly. And just to be clear, this sort of surveillance is illegal, isn't it? Yes, correct. Do people ever get prosecuted? Uh, well, we pass them over to the police, and yeah, they do because we often provide statements to the police to so, say, "Look, we've found this, and here's a photograph," and yep. um, pass over them. And there's quite a few of them that uh, are done for breaches of intervention orders. Every state's different, Prue, mm. when it comes to legislation and intervention orders. Every state deals are very different. There's not a national sort of blanket way that they deal with things. Right. That's a whole other question, I'm sure. We could have a discussion about it at some point. Steve, thank you so much for filling us in. This is such a a world that I had not been aware of before, but Mm. uh, it's an insidious one. But um, thank you for the work you do. No, thanks, Prue. Thanks for having us on. That's Steve Wilson, who's the founder of the Protective Group, as you heard, pretty widespread, 50, 60 people a week that he is consulting with on these issues of stalking, these digital stalking methods.